Hello, it's me, Pinion, or Sunspots, or whatever. Today I have sort of a different video. I have a uh, audiobook of, sort of audiobook, a little story I wrote about some original characters. And uh, this is not in the world of Ongolore, this is set in a different place where I'm going to write some stories over there too. But I decided I should try and write other things in Ongolore, and uh, yeah, I'm going to have a speed paint of the characters in this so you can watch that while you listen to this or just listen to this and do something else or whatever um yeah so uh feel feel free to comment any criticisms constructive criticisms in the description uh okay we're gonna get started diamonds and rubies another domestic violence report another angry drunk man Another child brought into the social services. She was a creamy white Siamese kitten, three years old when her father killed her mother. Thunder rumbled as she stared around the unfamiliar room. A small pink stuffed rabbit was clenched tightly in her paw. It was from her home, the only thing from her home. A middle-aged cat tucked her into the large white bed, muttering reassurances as she turned out the light. The little kitten, whose name was Ruby, was given to a new home. A home where she could forget her old house and her parents and life. A home to be happy. But she wasn't. Memories persisted as she grew up, growing less and less distinct. But she always felt as if sometime before her life had been better. Being so young, when it had happened, she didn't understand the horror that had brought her away. She only remembered her old home, the luxury of her infancy, the silk and velvet of the shining furniture, the large sunny room full of flowers, and at the center, a large red grand piano. The jewels that adorned her clothes, and the diamonds and emeralds, and the ruby, her namesake. Her new home was small and crowded. Her foster family lived in a lodging house. Her foster father worked in a pipe factory. Her clothes were always dirty, and the food was tasteless and scanty. Her memories made her discontent. She never felt like she belonged with the other young children, who only knew this life and could be happy. When Ruby was six, she was put into school, where she learned to read and write and how to be a good citizen. She learned about the high class, where she had been born, where cats could live off the work of their fathers, the work of the businesses they had inherited, and she learned about the low class, where she had been dropped by her bad luck and violent father. One day, when she was ten years old, she sat on the dumpy swings in the small playground at recess. The other young cats were playing tag, racing around the slides and scrambling over the monkey bars without a care in the world. Ruby scruffed a paw on the dusty ground under her. Discontentment and aggravation prickled in her chest, although the emotions were dulled by the long years of tedium. Dropping off the swing, she turned toward the far corner of the playground, where the old play, er play areas for the younger cats stood forgotten. She had played here a lot when she was small, as did all the kittens in her class, but now dust had settled. One corner of the chain-link fence that enclosed the play playground had fallen over, and old cardboard boxes and newspapers had blown in. Little plastic houses, which were once colorful, were now sun-bleached and cracked, now that Ruby's class had outgrown the kitten toys, no one had ventured here for years. Ruby picked her way to her favorite playhouse. It was meant to look like a small kitchen with little pots and pans, built-in stove and sink. She liked this one because she thought it looked like a kitchen or house. Some hidden memory in the back of her mind, so indistinct, no visible image came up. Only a feeling. A sense of happiness tingled with fear and mystery. An idea came upon her. She would play here, make it into her secret place, her hideout. She dragged open a cardboard box and placed it in the center of the room. She put some of the small chairs around it to make it a makeshift table. By sitting, she could almost imagine she could feel the carpet under paws, almost smell the coffee simmering on the stove. The bell rang and she hurried to class. That night, she was unusually fidgety at supper and in the dingy room at the foster family lodging house. The family her family was lodging with ate with them, the children allowed and messy eaters. If only she could be alone. No, she was alone. If only she could so have someone around her, someone who knew how to behave with manners, someone who loved beauty and light and luxury like she did. The next day she brought her pink stuffed bunny to the secret spot. She had kept it safe all these years. She did her best to keep it clean, but its bright fur had turned dull and its ears drooped, but she still loved it. She sat on one of the chairs and it sat on the other. We are having a tea party today, she said softly. Oh, how lovely, she said for the rabbit. Ruby moving her paws over the 
cardboard table mim mimicking the action of pouring tea and handing out sugar. She continued her game. When the bell rang, she hurried into school, leaving her rabbit behind. She was worried about it all through class. What if someone came into the playhouse and took it? What if it was gone when she got back? It was the most important thing in the world to her. After school, she rushed into the playground and dove into her secret place. And there it was, right where she had left it. This was her secret place, her imaginary home. As, as she turned to leave, she caught motion in the corner of her eye. Ruby whipped around. Sitting in the chair was a very beautiful cat. She had soft gray fur with strange angular blue markings. Her eyes were large and dark. Ruby stared and backed away. The strange cat just looked at her and said, What a lovely kitchen! Her voice was soft and ancient. It almost sounded like a hundred cats were speaking at almost the same time, but not quite. Ruby blinked. Would you like some tea? she asked, and hastily sat down on the third chair. Yes, please, the strange said cat. The strange cat said. After that, they were friends. This cat had the same sort of ideals that Ruby specifically was looking for in a companion. They had tea parties every day, at recess and after school. When Ruby asked her name, she said, Whatever you want, I'm here for you. Oh, Ruby says, surprised. Okay, then, I'll call you Diamond, the strongest and most precious of the gems. Weeks passed and then months. Ruby gathered broken plates and cracked mirrors to make her secret place more beautiful. When she was there, there with Diamond, she could picture her old so home so clearly. It felt so real. More months passed and Ruby grew more resentful. We're better than this, she told Diamond resentfully. I belong in a higher class. She can, began to get more restless and discontent. It was tearing her apart. And as time went on, she visited her secret place less and less. And she began to forget Diamond. One day, when Ruby was 17, a young orange tomcat came to her foster family's house, asking for Ruby. He worked in the law office. He told Ruby that her father had died in prison, that she had come into, the, into her inheritance. The old manor house and hundreds and thousands of dollars were hers. You can imagine how excited and happy she was. The tomcat asked if he could take her to see it and sign some papers. Ruby paid one last visit to her secret place. Diamond was there congratulating her. Hey, I'm so excited, Ruby said. Diamond grinned at her and her eyes twinkled. I'll miss you. Oh, Ruby said, suddenly felt uncomfortable. You can come back with me, she invited. No, Diamond said strongly. You're leaving me behind. Now get out of here and go. Ruby was glad at this response. She didn't need Diamond anymore, and now she wanted nothing to do with her. But she did give her that stuffed rabbit she had when she was a baby. She didn't need either of them now. Ruby got into a big limousine and rode to her new house. After hiring many workmen to dust and clean up the house, it was just as she had remembered it. Her favorite room was the large glass-paneled room with the piano. Years passed and Ruby was happy. She married the orange tomcat and they had a little daughter. They named her Crystal, and she was orange and white. She thought rarely of her old home, the impoverished working class. She almost never thought of Diamond or her secret place. Although she had relied on it for so many years, now she thought of it with scorn, like she did for all the things from her old life. She told herself that Diamond was imaginary in her, and believed it too, but there was always a feeling in the back of her mind that something was wrong with the story. One summer day, she was having a barbecue with her husband and daughter in the driveway. Crystal was three years old and wander, wandered happily around the gravel and grass front yard. The sun shone down upon the happy scene. The smell of the ribs on the fire drifted out from under the lid of the grill, and Ruby called her daughter for supper. Crystal came running up excitedly. Ruby turned to smile at her, but she froze with horror. A cold wind flew up from somewhere deep in the ground, and the fur on the back of her neck rose. Where did you get this? Ruby asked. Crystal dropped the dirty old stuffed rabbit and looked down at it in confusion. Someone gave it to me. Who gave it to you? The lady over there. Crystal looked back at the empty driveway. What? She said she knew you. She said you were friends when you were little. What was her name? Ruby asked, already knowing the answer. Diamond. Well, that's the end of that particular story. I hope you like it. And yeah, I can't read out loud very well. So a lot of editing will have to be done. But yeah, I have more stories from Sapphire City potentially coming. Um, yeah, um, have a very Merry Christmas.